All right, my Plant Strong broccolinis. If you don't have a ticket yet for Plant Stock 2022, what in the world are you waiting for? I want you to join us September 9th to the 11th. It's a virtual event. No excuses whatsoever. Save the date as we rock and roll with the biggest Brock stars in the plant-based space. We're going to head into each one of their kitchens. You get a bird's eye view into their kitchens. And we're going to cook with these Brock stars. And we're going to serve up all these delicious and inspiring whole food, plant-strong, oil-free recipes that are going to help you maximize your lifestyle, crush your health goals, and your health span goals. For the full lineup of this year's awesome weekend, visit plantstrong.com slash plantstock. One ticket gets you access for the entire household. Gather your family and friends and join ours. I cannot wait to see you in just a few weeks. I really meant this as a tip of the hat to my mom because as she said earlier in the podcast, that my dad came home with this theory about how to re- prevent, or he used to call it arresting and reversing heart disease and a lot of just chronic Western diseases. And so he came home with this theory and my mom was the one who took this theory and put it into practice. She made this happen. I mean, my dad can make his morning oats, but then that's it. Like he doesn't have time. He didn't learn. I mean, he's a genius in what he does. His skills are, you know, he's got mad skills in the surgical theater, but she made it happen. She made, she was a full-time job, four kids, and a husband who worked full-time. She would shop, cook, create, and invent this new way of eating. I'm Rip Esselstyn, and welcome to the Plant Strong Podcast. The mission at Plant Strong is to further the advancement of all things within the plant-based movement. We advocate for the scientifically proven benefits of plant-based living and envision a world that universally understands, promotes, and prescribes plants as a solution to empowering your health, enhancing your performance, restoring the environment, and becoming better guardians to the animals we share this planet with. We welcome you wherever you are on your Plan Strong journey, and I hope that you enjoy the show. I got to give you all a big kale to the yeah, because I want you to get fired up, because today... I'm going to sit down with two of the most amazing women that I know, and we are going to live fierce, stay bold, and eat delicious with none other than my mother, Anne, and my sister, Jane. They've been on the podcast before, but not for this reason. And that's because we are celebrating the release of their new cookbook, Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior, which is out and available right this second. Now, it is always a party with these two, and we were fortunate enough that we all kind of convalesced at the Esselstyn family farm a few weeks ago, and I'm sure you know what that means. It can get a little nutty when the three of us are together because that Esselstyn feistiness is alive and well. Now, Of course, I am super biased, but I want you to know that this isn't your typical cookbook. Truly, it's a peek into our family's history with wonderful stories, incredible photos, inspiring quotes, and delicious recipes from three generations of Estelsons. Now, mostly, Jane and Anne pay homage to the people who started it all, Anne and Essie, for forging and navigating that undiscovered world of plant-based nutrition at a time when virtually no one understood how vital it was for our health, including myself and my two brothers and my sister Jane. Here we are, all of us, decades later, and I am so smitten to be able to sit down with Jane and Ann and share some of the inspiration and recipes with you today that are in this cookbook. My mother, Anne, has been called the Julia Child of plant-based cooking, and I think you'll see why after you dig through some of the recipes and photos in this fantastic cookbook. And the absolute same thing can be said of my sister, Jane. 
This truly is a fun and inspiring message of hope for all women to improve their own health so they can remain strong, bold, and fierce in body and in mind alike. So let's do it. Let's jump in with Jane and Ann and let's become plant-based women warriors. Here we are, Jane and Ann. <laughs> Another episode of the Plant Strong Podcast. Now, Woo! if I'm not mistaken, this is the third time that you guys as uh, as a team have appeared on the Plant Strong Podcast. I think so. I think so. Yeah. And this is this is a very special pod, pod, podcast because you guys have um, have launched something really special. And Jane, how long have you guys worked on this project? Wait, what's the name of the project? Be a plant-based woman warrior. <laughs> Live fierce. Stay, stay bold. Eat delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we actually, we actually got what a team. What a team. What a team. But we got this project March seventh, twenty twenty. So right before the world went sideways, and we were we felt so lucky because not only did we have this project together, but we had something to do mm. because we knew we no one knew where this whole COVID thing was going. So we had this project, something to do, and. The third best thing about it is that we are next door neighbors, not across the street, but like next door, the little pine needle path going back and forth. So we had this project to work on and food to share all throughout the last, well, it's been three years now, but it's been in production for a year. Well, what I love too is that in in the book, you have photos of the cozy little pine needle path that actually takes you from... Two Pepper Ridge Road to, is it three? Three Pepper Ridge. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our, our street is anarchistic. This makes no sense numbers-wise. So, yes, we are side by side, yeah. two and three. Two and three. Even in hot. Yeah. So, I, I want to dive deep into, into this book and the inner workings of it. But first, we are at the farm. Uh, the Esselstyn family farm. Uh, we are here as a whole big Plant Strong clan for, gosh, about another, another week I know you're leaving soon, but um, have we had a blast or what? Um, amazing! It's been it's been so fun because it's it's Ryan and my 25th wedding anniversary, and I of course gave all the brothers and their families marching orders. They had to all come with a dish, and they had to come with a family dance. So we had the <laughs> coolest dances that everyone gave Brian and me, if you will for our 25th wedding anniversary. I mean, what? that's the best gift you can get in my book. Yeah. Because I love dancing and I love family. And so what, were there 20 <laughs> of us, right? I think well, there we were, know, with the, yeah. Well, with the, there were 20 of us that night. We and, had some plus ones. Yeah. Tw- and, 21. My yeah. sister was there. Yeah. Yeah. And just the, the plant-based extravaganza that was served, which we're going to talk about here in a second, the games that we played, the toasts that were made, uh, the dancing, the creativity. Um, will you share uh, one of the, what I thought it was, it was the best um, creative, I guess, what would it be? <laughs> creative uh, where, where game, game, game that you asked each family to do or each person to do, which was... You got to be a vegetable. Cryo. Oh, cryo. Cryo. Yeah. Well, cryo was. Is that Kral's idea? Well, cryo, well idea. our family, yeah. Kral, our daughter, took the responsibility for our family because I sort of did the introduction, glide down the stairs like Ginger Rod or Fred Astaire. Anyway, um, she had everybody act like a vegetable, behave, move, dance. You and had to so, announce your vegetable and then be your vegetable. Your fruit or vegetable. So we had like bunches of grapes rolling along the yard. We had three Asparagus heads of romaine a- promising across the yard. <laughs> we had... Dinosaur kale. Dinosaur kale. <laughs> um, that was a great one. We had snap peas. We had, what, Brussels sprouts. I mean... Yeah. Anyway, this is a game that I encourage you all to play the next time you you have a, a like friends over. Um, it is a great after dinner or before dinner game. Yes. <laughs> or between courses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to talk for a second before we dive into this about each of your journeys, right? Because 
keep in mind this this audience this plant strong audience is growing and maybe some people don't know the background as much but can you like you know give us the reader's digest version of your journey to whole food plant-based well it started with my husband who is of course the reason why <clears throat> we're all plant-based and he is the reason that we are fiercely plant-based actually and he started have you go back in around 83 to take he's a general surgeon but as in 1983 <laughs> did i say you said 83 oh <laughs> yeah. 1983 not 1883 ice cream cone <laughs> ice cream <laughs> i could lick it if it were an ice cream cone but this is not she has a tendency to you know it floats it floats away so <laughs> so he took on the heart disease patients um, who were really at their wit's end of, of living. They were ready for the, for the grave. And he gave them a plant-based diet, and they miraculously made an incredible recovery. Yeah, yeah. And so we were on our way. And before he did that, he, we had to go plant-based. He felt that there's no way he could ask his patients to do it if he wasn't doing it. So, of course, I took it on, and there was no internet, no cookbooks that I had. And maybe there in the West Coast, there was the Mary and John McDougall, but they were on the West Coast, and that was like being in, uh, that was far, far away back then. And we didn't have friends. People, I mean, the word vegan and vegetarian were kind of weird words. So, but we did it. It just, we did it. it. One of the things that really helped us do it was we had been in Puerto Rico on a, uh, and my husband had been speaking there relating to the thyroid, parathyroid world of his. And we had had rice and beans and loved it. So that is where we actually started out eating. And believe it or not, it is where we've ended up. It is our favorite meal. It is our, all our family's favorite meal. It is our Christmas Eve meal when we have guests. So, uh, but we did it. And, and all of you can do it. The one thing I feel strongly about is that... <laughs> Everybody today is at such a disadvantage, and we were so lucky back there then because there was no vegan junk food. Mm -hmm. There was no substitute for ice cream. There was no substitute for hamburger. And so there, were no, there was nothing to tempt us <laughs> in that other world as if we were being good by doing it. Because the key thing I can say, and I, I say it all the time, is you have to read ingredients. If you know that you are not eating meat, you're not eating dairy, and you're not eating oil, then read the ingredients and you will be horrified at the long list, which you have to have a magnifying glass to read. Thank you, Ann. Jane, so, I mean, you were obviously well aware of what SC was doing. When did you decide, okay, this sounds pretty good. I'm in. I'm on board. Um, on the plant-based? Yeah. Um, uh, I, as a kid, never liked meat, so it was kind of easy for me to, to jump into this. And I was a freshman in college, so I was like 17, 18, when they, I called home, and our brother Zeb, who was still at home, said, uh, Hey, Jane, uh, Mom and Daddy are doing something weird. We're not eating any more meat or dairy or oil or sugar or salt. Or I'm like goodness <laughs> like everyone says well, what are you eating <laughs> and it actually sounded fine and so by I came home from college right about then and I just haven't looked back um so I'd say right around I mean you did the same thing like we had to transition I hate that word for this but like we well, from college into we were all like college kids launching ourselves into life but we had this we did, my parents just kind of luckily tucked this into us right as we were making our way and it hit us all at an advantageous time like I know I was swimming for Michigan I was a, a scholarship swimmer at the University of Michigan you were a triathlete professional triathlete another brother was you know swimming for his university and our all four of us actually so 
to eat this way and feel good and feel okay and strong and you know swimming and being an athlete uh it was it was kind of the it was good pr- uh, proof was in the pudding if you will and i don't know we just stuck with it yeah haven't looked back yeah exactly um and i noticed that in this dedication to this book you dedicate it to to essie yeah oh He's, he's the reason. He's, he's the shoulders upon which we all stand. <laughs> That's right. And I also noticed in here that you say that the fiercest person that you know in the world is who? My mom. <laughs> and why is that? What makes her fierce? Well, I we're... roar. <laughs> Hear me <laughs> roar. Eat this. Read ingredients. <laughs> There's coconut oil in that. Don't eat it. <laughs> yes, mommy. Try <laughs> this. It's delicious. Well, you know, it's funny is that so with the antics that you're pulling right now, uh, there's a quote in here from Jane's husband, Brian Hart, and he basically says, Anne is a bully, bully. but a bully for good. <laughs> so you are. You are. And it's it's... It's adorable. <laughs> You're an adorable and, bully. Right. And I tell you, it really works. <laughs> really. It, it, Rip has three children, and it particularly works on two of his three children. <laughs> and Hope will try absolutely anything I ask her to try. <laughs> Cole will sort of. And Sophie will refuse to try anything. <laughs> well, you got her to try a grape once. <laughs> no, great. but she's great. I mean, she. Is, I tell you, Rip. I have been blown away by the sandwiches that Sophie builds with hummus. Hope or Sophie? Sophie. Sophie, yeah. Sophie builds uh, who, with... I think you mean Hope. No, I mean Sophie. <laughs> okay. Sophie. Okay. They are beautiful. She puts <laughs> sprouts. She puts some avocado. She puts arugula. I mean, they are amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah. she is... She's learned. Yeah. Well, you're 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 very persuasive. You definitely are. So Sophie is and Hope are plant-based woman warriors in training. Yes, they are. Indeed. Um, so, On the rise. So you guys, uh, Jane, you've been living next to Anne now for how many years? We have been living next door on Pepperidge Road for probably 16, 17 years. Okay, 16, 17 years. I mean... How would you say your relationship with Anne has developed over the last 16 years? I mean, do you feel closer to her now than you ever have? Or well, it's, I mean, is there a way- mother-daughter relationship. She's the boss, Jane is. Yeah, but it's- Says the boss. Yeah, but you guys work together now. You're, you're you, YouTube sensations. You, you know, you, I mean, you create all books together. Rip. What? It's all Jane. All <laughs> Jane. This book is no. all Jane. And every time we have a demo, every time we have a video, every time we have anything, like I'll, I'll put it together. I'll go to the store. I'll shop. I'll prep. I'll mise en place. I get it ready. All and Jane. Then, and then no, and mommy comes and she's like, I, I, Jane, I have nothing to say. You start. You just, you just, go, you go. So I'll say, hi, this is. And she'll go. Let me just say. Let me just add. Let me just. Let me. And before, <laughs> it's, it's all her. And that's that's what everybody actually <laughs> learns the most from, and I think loves the most. So. Well, yeah. No, and. <laughs> <laughs> and you're very real and authentic to the core. Um, now, so this... The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This, this, is, your, this is your, what, sixth book? So this is... This is I mean, well, collectively. Collectively, is this well, your... Ma, well, you could say Mommy wrote all the recipes in Daddy's book. Well, I, I, I know. And then she wrote the book with me, that Brent vs. Hartie's cookbook. Okay. And so this is, in a way, her third. And it's my fifth, but we've overlapped for two. So... I don't know. But Jane, it's, you did the recipes in Rip's books. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's the fifth book I've worked on or been a part of. I mean, I've always collaborated. I'm always have a co, yeah, a co-creator. And for those that are wondering, so tell me, what are the guidelines for for the recipes that are in this book? Our guidelines for this book: the be a plant-based woman warrior, live fierce, stay, stay bold, bold, eat, eat delicious, delicious, are the same <laughs> as all of our books, which are really basic guidelines. I mean, we could just hand out one page flyers saying, um, no meat, no dairy, no added oil, minimal salt and minimal sweet. That's it. And 
we have a because we do so much work with heart disease patients and people who are really sick and need to be compliant with guidelines rip at coined something uh, my parents work as plant perfect and the plant perfect yeah there they, yeah there they are just looking at them yeah. <laughs> the plant perfect is really no meat no dairy no added oil minimal salt minimal sweet um a plant perfect but plant strong same exact guidelines but we do use a little bit of avocado and some nuts and some sauces in particular and some desserts but that difference of some avocado nuts is a world of flavor and possibility and your tongue is so happy so it's tricky because people think wait you said no this no that but we're talking plant perfect for heart disease patients and we do not wiggle on that at all like and it, no and, and it is a world of difference for those patients who can really stick on those guidelines of no meat no oil no dairy and no nuts and avocado if they have heart disease yeah Amazing. and then plant perfect um as and is sorry plant strong rips guidelines and all you know his whole branding is just that like a little bit of nuts and, and what a little we, bit of what avocado our wonderful options. uh avery has done in this book tell them jane uh, uh penguin publishing and avery's are oh. so many. they went through all the recipes because they know that we are sort of known for heart disease prevention um they went through to make sure that the recipes in here that are compliant with our heart disease guidelines are labeled as heart disease friendly recipes mm -hmm. and if for some reason they're not we have options to how you can change it for example if a salad has some walnuts in it or toasted pecans we'll say to make this heart disease friendly remove the pecans it, it's that simple some recipes you cannot make them plant or uh, heart disease friendly so they just don't even say so mm. well that's that's really smart that you guys did that um so if you guys are cool with it, what I'd love to do right now yeah. is walk through <gasps> some of the some of the recipes. Rip, I have one thing I yes. have to do. I can't yes. not yes. Con con go on. I know, no, you're right, and we're going to do that. <laughs> but there are just three things that I want to read to you. Uh, we talked. I, I talked earlier about getting Rip's children to eat, and uh, one of my jobs in this book was to interview our grant our children and grandchildren how they felt about living plant-based so there's ten of them uh, there are ten of them but I just want to read three of them one of them is not rips and that is Georgie who was eight and she said without being plant-based I can't imagine how I'd live I'd open the refrigerator and see things like chicken wrapped in plastic and just feel like what happened <laughs> but my favorite <laughs> quote in the book is from Hope, Rip's youngest, who is an amazing cook herself, and she was seven, and this is what she said, if you eat meat, you die. <laughs> that was Hope, but this is Sophie, who was aged 11. Can I get a kid in there? Can I get a kid in there? <laughs> no, okay. I just want to do these three. I mean, you can add a kid. No, no. Whenever I eat good food, I feel good. And whenever I eat unhealthy food, something in my stomach just feels wrong. I'm lucky because it's been easy for me since I've been plant-based my whole life. Or plant-strong. Plant-strong doesn't mean just eating salads all the time. It means so many fun, unique things, like a kale cake with raspberry frosting, not just vanilla frosting with pink dye in it, but lemons and raspberries, and it's just really fun and tasty. <laughs> so maybe that is a good lead-in to the food. Yes. Did Did you want to read something? No, you got, no, okay. no, no, they're, they're all good. Okay. All great they're quotes. all good. Okay. They're all good. Yeah. But those. So, if you don't mind, first what I'd love to do is just say, and you move. Oh, there we go. I just want to go through quickly the different chapters of all the food because I think you guys have done a brilliant job um, putting this all together. And the first is powerful breakfasts. I mean, come on, we got to start the day with a powerful breakfast. Yeehaw! You got to start the day with oats in some way. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, then let's you know what? Let's just take it one at a time then. So let's start with powerful breakfast, okay? So I have gone through and kind of earmarked some of the ones that really caught my attention. Um, for example, if you could, no, no, you don't get to see this. This is my, my notes. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, okay. I want to talk about the women's <laughs> women, though. Why what? 
<laughs> you, you can not, we're, we're, we can edit this out. <laughs> so, so um, wait, what did you want to bring up? No, I just feel like you know this right now. Before we dive into the recipes, I kind of wanted to talk about why we decided to call this plant-based women warriors. Like it's 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 the title and it's kind of the uh, the push of a lot of the text in the beginning. Um, and so it's not just another plant-based cookbook in some ways. But I mean, it is, it is, but it's sort of the push behind it was that I really meant this as a tip of the hat to my mom because as she said earlier in the podcast that my dad came home with this theory about how to re prevent, or he used to call it arresting and reversing heart disease and a lot of just chronic Western diseases. And so he came home with this theory and my mom was the one who took this theory and put it into practice. She made this happen. I mean, my dad can make his morning oats, but then that's it. Like he doesn't have time. He doesn't learn. I mean, he's a genius in what he does. His skills are, you know, he's got mad skills in the surgical theater, but she made it happen. She made, she was a full-time job, four kids, and a husband who worked full time, she would shop, cook, create, and invent this new way of eating. And spend all night correcting and, uh, ice papers. Cream pa I, and pr correct her sixth grade essays all night long. So she, this is the tip of the hat to her. I want to be a plant based woman where, like her and have the energy, the gumption, the know how, the can do to do that. And also, it's the tip of the hat to, it's mostly women. I know it's not everybody, but the majority of people in the world who think about, shop for, choose, prep, create, and serve food are women. Not, of course, not everybody. I don't want to get pushback on that. I understand. My husband's a way better chef than I am. But the majority of us are women. So I'm just saying, be bold, be fierce. You can be delicious. I've seen it happen. And the third reason why I'm, this is for, this is the tip of the, or this is for women, is that being a female in America in particular, because that's where I grew up, you as a female have a burden on you that is unique. And any other, any female out there knows what I'm talking about. It is this invisible, heavy expectation about your body and your food and your shape and your presentation, your identity. It's this wrapped up mess of a thing. And I feel so lucky that plant-based came into my life when it did mm. because my... All, all four of us, Rip Ted, Jane Zeb, all four of us were nationally ranked swimmers when we were, you know, in our prime. And I know my brothers didn't think for one minute about, like, they didn't, send, I, they didn't have any brain space about what they were eating and how it affected their body size and what they looked like or how they felt or what fit them anymore. Whereas I was this, like, crazy fit, nationally ranked swimmer for University of Michigan and I would wake up and just be overwhelmed with like, what the heck am I going to be able to eat today so I can swim and perform and be fed and also like be satisfied and also not keep growing and getting these curves that I'm not feeling comfortable in. And uh, again, plant-based eating kind of came into my life just then how fortunate I feel I am because it cut off all this, all this, as a friend of mine coined it, food head, which is just that you wake up with that heavy worry and burden about your, who you are, your identity, your body, your food, and how you're going to move forward. And plant-based eating really removed that food head. So oh, it's so nice. I don't have a scale to look at the numbers. I don't count a single calorie. I wouldn't mm -hmm. even know how to. We don't count steps that we do. We don't count uh, serving sizes. Always, people are always texting us or writing, what's serving size? And we're like, we have no idea. No idea. And it's such, it's such freedom. So that's why and this is really for women who just biologically were kind of a little different mm -hmm. in that way. I well, mean, it's freedom mm -hmm. because we did not want people burdened with how many calories, how many grams of fat, how much protein, yeah. protein and everything, and just to be able to eat freely. However, when I say eat freely, there are so many people that call my husband who say, help, I'm losing too much weight eating plant-based. Well, duh, there's no meat, no oil, no dairy, and so you gotta eat enough calories when you're eating, when you're moving to trans mm -hmm. 
plant-based if you are of a normal weight to begin with. And um, if you want to lose weight, it'll happen. <clears throat> For a lot of people, that's a great problem to have, right? Right. And, and if, you do, if you are trying to lose weight, then you can consciously not eat a lot of bread and pasta and mm -hmm. rolls and just bagels. The more processed just things. Move, yeah. So, Jane, when I read that chapter about the food head and what you, you know, kind of how you were experiencing that, um, it made me realize that I had never, I've never talked to you about that. And, yeah, uh, you were the crazy fit over older brother who didn't have to think about it at well, all. I know, but, but, but that is, I think it's great that you are, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's part of this book. It's part of, you know, you sharing that experience and, um, and, and I, I applaud you for it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's great. Um, to tell that story. I know. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> story? No story? I don't know. Which one? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> so she says, tell that story. Which one? <laughs> Can't remember. Okay. So we're listening. <laughs> so like. About check. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you, you, you want, want to. Tell? Oh, well. Yeah, I did remember. It's just that. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I was supposed to go skiing over one like decades and decades ago with, I've got three brothers. So I was heading out with my brothers to go with another brother to meet up with all these people and friends. And so at one point we were gathering together, you know, at this location at actually our house in Mill Cleveland to go somewhere and in walked one of their friends and he was where, I mean, again, these are all, we're all big swimmers, strong, big, strong, healthy, fit people. This guy had a shirt on that had a circle with a line through it and there was a chicken on it. And Looked like he was saying like no chickens, but it but it said no fat chicks, and that just encapsulated so much of what I was experiencing in my life. Like it's in the eighties, of oh my gosh, like he's able to wear this shirt saying like hey no fat chicks in my my visual sphere or what I don't even know what it's saying in my orbit in his yeah. orbit yeah. and. I mean, I saw that, and I, 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 it was like a punch. I just, I found myself, I didn't know how to think. I was like, I, I, I've got fat on my body, and I, I'm, I'm a, I, I hate the word chick so much, I can't even explain it. And I, I, I hid upstairs, underneath my mom's desk, or behind her filing cabinet. I didn't know what I was, I've never experienced that feeling in my own home, but this person coming in and wearing this, like if my brothers were wearing it, I'd be like, you, you can't wear that. I would, I would be like, but I, how can I do this to this person I'm supposed to be going on this trip with? And I was like, I ended up not going on the trip because of the shirt. <laughs> and I hope no one goes on a trip with anyone with that shirt. <laughs> or you have a very frank conversation and it's an opportunity for growth. Yeah. For all parties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, but it's, it's, that's like asking the wounded to help. It's, it's. Well, ask for help then. Ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's let's move on to some, some yeah. Well, this so that's behind that's like this woman warrior yeah. effort behind it, and that's why I'm so happy to have my. I've got three brothers, but I have my mom with whom to do this. Yeah. Um, so let's start with breakfast, okay? Powerful breakfast. So I see, I saw something in here that I'm like I want to go home and make this immediately because I want you all to know this is my first time looking at this book. I've been able to look through it now for like three days. So the first is Apple Flax Flapjacks. They look so adorable. Cryle, C Cryle. Jane's uh, oldest our, daughter, invented that. Well, I, well, uh, well, I think it's probably out there people making it, but it says pa pancake batter that you, p you have pancake batter and then you take an apple and you slice it, not how you would think, but you slice it kind of horizontally so you're making sort of so it has rings a hole in the that that have a, the core out of the center. So you they look like the um, donuts. Donuts because you put the apple slices yeah. in the batter and then cook them, flip them. It's I, so clever and yummy. I, I can't wait to do it. And at first I'm like, oh my god, you, you got donuts in this book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about so? This is like such a vintage, quintessential Anne uh, breakfast that I would love for you to just oh, talk yeah. about it for oh, a second. Yeah. 
and that and that is that is your everybody has to everybody your warrior oats it's imperative that everybody at least try it it's steel cut oats turmeric it's everything you should be eating every day it's got a little sriracha it has nutritional yeast it has shiitake mushrooms (laughs) and a lot of kale and water and it is once you've eaten that, you are set for the day. You can go downhill if you have to. Have it for dinner the first time you have it if it no. makes you go, woo. Ah, breakfast, Jane. Okay. Bully for good. And then, <laughs> and then I, so I like, so I, I, I'm trying to choose like one of, a, from a different kind of variety of different kind of groupings. So we have Ann's Warrior Oats. We've got the Flapjack Apple Pancakes. Apple Flax, yes. flap jacks. It is so hard yeah, to yeah. say. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister. And then I, the the one of my favorite fruits in the whole wide world is bananas. And so I saw banana muffins or bread, and I just like. It's my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? It was first recipe in the, the prevent and reverse heart disease, and it has and been we, when she sort you of tweaked a few things. Tweaked for here. It's okay. wonderful. Yep. Okay, so next, the next section, and there's so many. Oh, well, actually, grits and greens. Grits and greens because mm. grits. I, I've, I think I've had grits like three times in my life. There, it, it's polenta. You've had it way more. Polenta is greens, or, or polenta is. Grits. And of course, you. We advocate for people to have greens several times a day, so this is a nice way to knock some back early on. But what what else can you tell me about grits and greens? Grits and greens. I want to say this recipe came from a great friend, Travis, who you've met. And she's, oh my God. she's one of my favorite people on earth. And she's from the South. And grits in the South are usually like, you know, they're greasy. And they're just, you can imagine what goes into grits in the South, especially if you live down there. It's a salty, greasy thing or however you want to have it. This is a total different take on it. She just has it like with so much kale or Swiss chard. And she makes the grits kind of creamy because she makes creamy with broth vegetable broth or with some oat milk or maybe some soy milk and a little little bit of hot sauce and it, it, they're delicious brian and i eat this like three times a week now with it's with kind beans. of scary because anytime i go over every night jane and brian are eating grits and, grits and greens and, and beans. beans okay so let's <laughs> with this, we have a fan blowing that fan is, is being yeah. of um so I, let's move on to sauces. Secret weapons. Oh, Rip, you're not going to believe it. Secret weapons. Jane, tell them about. No, okay. no. Well, well, wait, 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 wait. wait. Rip, what? Rip, you've got to listen to this. Why secret weapons is second? Oh, sure. James. <laughs> okay. Um, the publisher just said, you know, you guys have all these, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, da da da, but you keep saying that the sauces are like the answer to everything, and they're your secret weapons, and this is how you can go forward, and this is what makes all the difference. Can we put it first? And we were like, let's put breakfast first, and then you can put the secret weapons because we actually do use some sort of sauce, hummus, dressing, salsa, or guacamole in everything, well, everything. thereafter. So they they were clever in putting it right there. Well. So the other night, uh, and I posted this on Instagram. You posted it on Instagram. People were just like, are eating it up, and that you made these huge three, like bowls with different whole food ingredients bowls from this big. bowls this big, wooden bowls, just like crazy, wonderful, gorgeous, and each one you had like you know the carrots, the 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 tofu cubes, the purple cabbage, whatever it was, but each one was a little bit rice different. Rice noodles, yeah. brown rice, rice noodles. Rice noodles or brown rice, Napa cabbage, purple cabbage, just uh, fresh tomatoes, da, 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 da. Yeah, and you said you were inspired by that, by... Uh, oh, by, Car- Car- by Plant You, Carly... Carly Budrod. Bud- but, but on each one, you used one of these different secret weapons. Oh, right? yes. So on, yes. One, on one, you had a lemon tahini. We had a lemon tahini sauce on, on one. On one, you had a Thai peanut. Thai peanut. And one, you had a walnut ginger. Yep. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Good memory. All sauces in here under secret weapons. Yeah. So, but tell me about, so a couple that like, and they, I want to try every one of them, but what about watermelon salsa? Like, oh, where, what can you tell tiny me about little, that? Because <laughs> salsa obviously is just, you know, chopped up vegetables and herbs, something, something herbaceous, something sort of 
onion ear, garlic, whatever you like, you can make a salsa out of. And we have found in some of the books that we did is that we you know, not, didn't move from just like tomato salsa to corn salsa, but from corn salsa to mango salsa and then to peach salsa. And we have got like a grape and radish salsa in one of our books, in mm-hmm. one of your, our mm-hmm. books. And I had a, like a whole was trying to make salsa one night and I didn't have anything sort of fruity or sweet because I kind of come to like a little bit of the balance of the sweet with the, with the onion, kind of like almost like a coming from the chutney family. So I put in tiny little cubes. I mean, not, not minced watermelon, but just micro cubed um, watermelon with all the other sort of typical uh, salsa stuff. And it was so yummy and refreshing because salsa brings a moisture and this refreshment and pop a flavor to whatever dish you're using. So that was a ton of fun to, to make that one. Yeah. And then, of course... You know, Rip, <clears throat> one of the salsas that actually truthfully started in Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and has been truthfully in some way or another repeated in every book of yours and every book of ours is our mango salsa, mango love, lime bean love, salads. Love, love. You, you've... I mean, Rip has just been talking this time with all our family that he wants to make a lime mango. Oh, right? No, I want to make an arugula. Arugula. Arugula, cannellini bean, yeah. mango, um, mandarin orange salad. Well, Yum. Is there a bean <laughs> but there? don't you have a? Yeah, you you got oh, to have. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. What about like? The lightning dressing, because that's kind of a tried and true, like, right? Awesome. Oh. Jane's lightning bowl uh, with well, that that's dressing. that's Engine 2 cookbook. But the lightning dressing, um, we, were, we were able to, we're, like, all dressings have to be, new, all recipes have to be new in a new cookbook, but you can carry over less than 10% of things, that, like, uh, recipes that are kind of mm. thread through, like, you you need to have this walnut sauce in order to do this, or you need to have this or that. Lightning dressing was one of the ones I carried over from Engine 2 cookbook to this because it is, I mean, I, I've been Lightning struck. Lightning dressing. I, I've been, I have been struck by it and forever changed. Forever. Now, I want to talk, you to talk about Mommy's Mushroom Dressing 3.0. Gravy. Gravy. <laughs> Did I say, yeah, yeah gravy. gravy. But first, before you go, I just want to say, the photography in this is incredible. Next is. level, baby. It is. And I just want to show you this one. Like, take a, take a look at that, for example. And the background, the, you know, just like how pure and clean and the patina that's involved in there. Uh, I love it. And so you guys. And, and I am salivating thinking of that mushroom <laughs> gravy on anything. It's awesome. Well, and it, and that mushroom gravy actually has been in our family for 30 years, and it just keeps getting a little changed, a little changed, a little changed. And the way we made it better for, for women in this one is that historically it had um, it's had different amounts of miso and and soy sauce, and but this this time we changed it. We took out we and we had some sherry in it, but as we know, alcohol and breast cancer are just not mm. not compatible. So we just like, hey. This is where we like the sodium levels or the amount of salty taste in our mouth. And this one's gluten-free as well. So we, it has you know, fewer al- allergens. It's, just, it's kind of more user-friendly for all involved. No mm. alcohol, no wheat, um, and less sodium. So give it a try. It's our, I think it's our best version. There at a, well, of actually, all. I still love a little sherry and <laughs> mushroom gravy because it leaves a flavor. The, the, the alcohol burns right off. And that I think it's flavor a flavor that might, nice. you might be familiar with historically. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, I don't. You've got all these different pesto sauces, an avocado, a walnut, a cashew that look delicious. But hummus. This is the best hummus. Hickory so Smokehouse I was gonna say, hummus. I was going to say, you've got all these hummuses. Talk to me about one that you think everybody needs to try. Hickory Smokehouse hummus. <laughs> Hickory Smokehouse hummus. Well, tell me why. What makes it so... I mean, I'll look at all these hummus. The plural of hummus should be hummus because we love it. Um, the lemon uh, hummus, Kryl is crazy about that one. The black bean hummus, the roasted garlic hummus, they're all... But what is it about the Hickory Smokehouse? It... Um, well, you know, you've had like that smoke, like there's uh smokehouse almonds. I remember having all those, like they're yummy, just smoky flavored. 
there's a there's a new mommy to it. There's a you know a depth of flavor that's really mm. satisfying. We also have like um, besides that we have like a, a thousand island hummus that we've ever had before, mm-hmm. and just anyway, it, it, it's so fun to make different kinds of hummus. We have a ton of hummus in our books, beet hummus and yeah, and whatnot. You, I'm looking at a page right here, and the quote is. The right vinegar makes all the difference. Oh, well, I, that's, that's a quote what, by Ann. That's true. And the, the thing is, we have found that some quality vinegar, balsamic vinegars are stunning. For instance, actually, Rip was right. But last right night, we had the giant cauliflower. Rip made dinner. And he roasted it. And it was amazingly delicious. And at the end, I said, well, Rip, it just needs some balsamic vinegar on it. He wouldn't put it on, but it still was good. And I think it might have been even better with balsamic vinegar. But you vinegar. also, but you you love balsamic vinegar because of I think the flavor that it gives yeah. different things. But, no, it but gives. But you, a, but you also love it because it has some medicinal purposes, right? Yeah, it enhances the endothelial cells to um, sort of do their duty of. Yeah. All, their, all the good stuff they do. Yeah. And also many, uh, and including me, I don't mind some of the good balsamics just sprinkled on my salads alone with nothing else. For instance, a black bean salad with black beans, tomatoes, corn, um, some greens of some kind. Just balsamic vinegar is amazing on that. Let's talk sandwiches. Sandwich craft. Because... I think that while I've been here, probably every lunch has been an open face sandwich that you have prepared. And just the other day, um, you can't be looking. I'm not and looking. Just, and just the other day, you ha- we had some people over for lunch and you made the most gorgeous open faced heirloom tomato and corn slab. Uh, corn slab sandwiches we've had fr- wonderful corn the night before and you can cut it off in a slab and put it on on top of hummus and oh green onions uh, s- sprouts awesome awesome well and i we also love so just big slabs of summer delicious tomatoes on top of hummus with balsamic vinegar and basil are uh, so delicious there's the, there's the yeah. corn slabs. There's the corn slab. And then you've also got, what's, what do you, what's underneath it? You have some sort of green. Yesterday you had some greens in there. Yeah, I, I just said we had okay. sprouts. <laughs> I had sprouts, arugula. What else in there? Green onions. Yeah, that's good. Maybe I think I even had some radish. Just fill those sandwiches with everything you purple can. Cabbage. And purple you cabbage. Know, purple cabbage. Purple cabbage. Oh. Well, one of the things. So, what? Yeah. Purple cabbage should go everywhere you can put it, in every salad, every well, sandwich. I love the color, and I don't know if I love the taste, but of purple cabbage. Yeah. Oh, but you, you know, I, I've grown to love it. It's okay, weird, but I, I love it. And what about this apple lidded sandwich? I saw that, oh. and I was immediately like, T- you rip, know, rip. I I would love to try that. It's you know what? Awesome. It is absolutely it's crazy, and Rip, we're going to have it tomorrow refreshing our son ted was doing one of his city branch projects in colorado oh. and had gone out to lunch and it had something kind of similar to this so we tried it and what you do is actually it was a watermelon radish cucumber slice and then on top you put a big apple slice and it is funny it doesn't sound good but when you bite into it that sweet wet apple crunch crunch makes that whole sandwich i mean you could put nothing underneath it and it would be amazingly delicious i swear that is one of the top sandwiches to try in this book do you have a the, all and you the, can sandwich. Sprinkle, we have a, the sandwich section is actually good we've got a lot and, of great ones and sprinkle lemon lemon pepper on top it's, no salt and that's really makes it good is there a particular mm, apple that you two well, prefer no I think just try and find the f- biggest apple you can so it covers your whole sandwich, if possible. I have it be crispy, too. Now, I don't think a, a, a Macintosh would be the best, necessarily, but I think with a little crispness to it. Yeah. Just apple. I love Macintosh, don't get me wrong. All right, Jane, another thing that really caught my eye in here was your rock-around-the-clock grilled wrap. 
that's right here. <laughs> and well, those are it, just fun to make, and yeah, those I know, but I just love the, <laughs> you know, the way you learn a new a new way of taking a basically a tortilla and turning it into this incredible this grilled triangle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's here. well, it's it's it, it's kind of up close. You start with it and you fill in like it's called rock around the clock because you fill in the first fifteen minutes of if it was a clock with one topping and then you fold it over and then put another topping and fold it over another topping fold it over so you've got all these layers that are sort of each layer it's sort of like a round lasagna <laughs> and then it actually when you have it all in a little wedge you grill it in a panini or on a frying pan and you've got a wonderful grilled sandwich uh can we move into talking about soups yeah. because i would say the other thing i'd say tell me if you guys disagree but I think the two things that we have more for lunch as a family than anything else are usually soups and or open face. open face sandwiches. Yeah. Right? Great. And so soups, there's a couple that caught my eye here. Um, one was... Corn gazpacho, I bet. Well, corn gazpacho absolutely did because I've never had it. Ah, oh, so good. When this Elizabeth corn, gave it to Elizabeth Thornton. When corn season is going in its full swing, and don't make this with frozen corn that isn't super sweet because you do need that really good sweet corn we're doing this at plant stock and it's yeah this and year. it's so fun because you need to have yellow tomato and yellow pepper in it and it is beautiful and jane delicious. just mentioned plant stock we are having a food inspired chef inspired plant stock it's our 11th anniversary september 9th the 11th we Hope that you join us. And we'll give you the tricks and the treats <laughs> and the deliciousness of corn gazpacho. What do you guys think of this soup? New Senate soup. Oh, what's so this, this, uh, the story I love. So the other thing that I love about each one of these recipes is reading the header because it, it, it because you've tried to write a lot of headers yourself and you know oh how much God. goes into that. That's why. <laughs> and your headers are just as good in your book. I think. Well, but it, but it, 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 it gives you an attachment to the recipe and why it's important. Well, well Jane, tell them the about this one because it is really so fun what you did. Well, I learned from a neighbor of mine who does not have the same politics as I do um, that there's a soup at the Senate every day for the last 100, 150 years or something. They've had the same soup in the Senate. And it, you know, it's a ham bone and salt and uh, navy beans and whatever. So I just like, well, we have a new Senate these days so we need to have it be a little more reflective uh, in the soup so i took out the ham bone we put in bay leaf and we put in some vegetable stock and we put in black beans no we italian put in, parsley we put in and curvy strong vegetable broth and curvy kale and kosher salt just to have a little more diversity and expression italian parsley and and yeah i said i said that okay and um so anyway i, I want everyone to serve themselves the soup with their own ladle just like everyone having a chance to pound the gavel all right, let's move on to a, another thing that I would say you're incredible at doing it. I don't know about you, and I can tell you that I'm not as, as good about it as I should be, and that is making warrior salads. Oh, Jane's, Jane, that, okay. that's well, Jane. There you I go. Used to be, I used to be good at that, but Jane has surpassed everybody. Okay. Her salads are to die for. Jane, well then tell, tell me about the Wonder Woman yes. salad Ooh. for starters. Unless you want to talk about the three goddesses. The three goddesses is kind of fun because the three goddesses. Dude, I got to show you this. Look at this. The three goddesses, we have the power in the salad comes from two things. It comes from obviously like the foundation of what greens you're using. And here in, in the three goddesses salad, we have um, kale, romaine, and Napa cabbage, and those are the three goddesses, and we read all about how the, they represent the, the goddesses in the book. We're not gonna bore you with it now, but it's exciting. So that foundation is great, and then you have to have some cha-cha on top. Just the cha-cha on top of a salad makes you wanna have a second bite. If it's little cucumbers, or blueberries, or mandarin oranges, or toasted papitas, or whatever it is, zest of some sort, that adds so much to a salad. So yes, get some great greens going, Add some cha-cha on top. And then our, our the dressings clearly pulled all together. And we have some dressings that are just amazing this time. Steal the eye right out of your head, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, kale is Athena. Romaine is Isis. And Napa is 
Kerduin? Kerduin, yes. And you have Kerduin. to see why when you get the book. You can pre-order it, please do, please do, because if you pre-order, actually, you get a free recipe on my website with your receipt. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but not after so the an- So another thing. 23rd. Let me see what other. Um, and uh, you got a whole section on arugula <laughs> salads. <laughs> and, and I just want you to know that over the last probably three, four years, I have come to love rocket uh, yeah a, you know aka arugula arugula i it's one of my favorite greens yeah i agree and <laughs> i i i believe that every every bowl if you're going to put other things should have a rim of arugula and a bottom part of arugula so that it is in every bite that you're eating what was so funny is we were we were collecting salads for this for this cookbook and um we were collecting recipes and you know, we went through all the like, okay, let's see what we have. You know, mid COVID, we sort of assessed everything. We had like, you know, four breakfasts, eight lunches, six dinners. We had 44 desserts. We knew we were on the right path for a book for women. But what was so funny is that all the salads, I had like different salads of greens and this and that. And every salad my mom sent me was a different arugula salad. She'd be like, oh, oh try this one. Oh, oh, try this one. And finally, I'm like, okay, we're just going to make an Anne's arugula section. <laughs> This this is something that I want before I leave here, and that's the curry cauliflower with lentils and grapes. Oh, that whole awesome. combination, cauliflower, lentils, and grapes, has, it, anyway, has my mouth watering. I made it one Christmas when we were, we had a lot of family, and it was a sort of a last Christmas day. Everybody, everybody Thanksgiving. brought. Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving. I meant Thanksgiving. Everybody was bringing something, and I was thinking, oh, this, is, may, this may not hit it. Guess what? It was the first dish that was totally bare and empty and eaten. Oh, it was great. So and we actually great. have a YouTube on it because it's... it's, it's and, you, and your pro tip is to add pomegranate seeds for yeah. wonderful color at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. Thanksgiving-ish. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Ish. Thanksgiving-ish, yes. Um, okay, so let's... If you guys are cool, let's move on. Yeah. So one of the things that, you know... I that we eat a fair amount at our house is tofu and tempeh. Yeah. Right. I, we're, we're big fans. We're not freaked out, uh, by soy because we know the phytoestrogens actually can be very, very protective of the breast. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which you, you actually do a great job explaining that here in, uh, in one of the first couple chapters. But, um, what do you like doing with tofu and tempeh? I, we like to have it in all variety of ways. We like to have it uh, usually along, I like to bake it or to pan fry it. And that pan fry, dry fry, like nothing oil. Um, but we like to use usually a base of tamari, which is a low sodium soy sauce. And sometimes that's enough, but sometimes I want to put a little kiss of maple syrup in there to give it a luster. Mm. And if you want to take it even a little further, you can put in a, what gives it a little of more umami is some tomato paste, or if you don't have that, just use ketchup. And if you want to really be a pro, chefy chefy, add a wee bit of ginger. You've got some teriyaki. Done and done. So easy, so fun. <laughs> I, 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 and Jane has made me love tempeh. In fact, the quick cooked tempeh in a pan, which <laughs> we do a lot for lot, all, all kinds of demos. We do demos for demos. the Assistant Foundation. We're, and I tell yeah. you, it's hard to get the cooked pan fried tempeh off the off the out of the pan and to show the audience because I am dying to eat it all. It's so delicious. Mm, yes. Mm. Um, I, for me, tempeh. You just haven't had Jane's tempeh. Well, I know, but I want to figure out a way to get it more moist. That's and, why. No, and I had and I had pan that, fried. Pan fried. Okay. I can't bake it's it. Not okay. dry. Can't bake it. Yeah. I, and I had somebody on my podcast uh, cooking for peanuts, Nisha, mm-hmm. and she oh, does great. so many incredible things with tempeh. I loved her. I loved her. Your talk yeah. with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but look at you got chorizo tempeh or tofu, apple sage pan fried tempeh or tofu, savory tempeh. I mean. And, and, and I can tell you, the cubes, tell me this, because... Sesame ginger top tofu. Were, were the tofu cubes that you had in those big wooden salad bowls the other night, 
Were those all the same variety, or were they different the, varieties? I, just, I had to, I made sep, six or seven tubs of tofu. So those were all the same, because I just put them all in a big dish with Sophie. She helped me make them. Um, we just did it all with the, the teriyaki, which is our kind of close to our basic yeah. way to do it. Yeah, it was delicious. I like rip and chain. I also like using... <laughs> Balsamic vinegar in the shocking <laughs> in the tofu. I mean, tofu Shock. needs to have something to give it flavor. Shocking. Right. If uh, well, yeah. if you have heart disease and don't want or are concerned about the sodium, that's an alternative. It, you're right. You're absolutely right, Acid Queen. You're right. Thank you. Um, let's talk appetizers. Mm -hmm. Appetizers, sides, and clever extras. Oh, you've got to show that picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is such a delicious dish. Green beans, <laughs> green beans with ses sesame crumble on it. And that ses to there's nothing as delicious as toasted sesame seeds. Ooh. Um, so the first thing that I have on my list here is, and it's called a bunch of BS, yes. meaning Brussels sprouts. And you're big on Brussels sprouts. I've become big on Brussels sprouts. But they have to be prepared the right way. And um, let's see. Like, Let me just see if I can find the, it here. The bunch of BS is tw towards the end of the section. It, yeah, Here's yeah, the yeah. bunch of BS. Yeah. But you've got... Brussels sprout section. And, and I'm like, okay, I want the buffalo Brussels because I want a little heat. And then you've got the Brussels sprout tats. Tats. And then you've got sweet and savory Brussels. I mean, all three of those just look incredible. Can you tell me about the buffalo and what makes it buffalo? Just the, just the heat. I mean, but... Um, they're, well, the nutritional yeast is kind of like, it helps give it a little bit of an essence on it. Like it gives it a presence on top of the of Brussels sprouts. But uh, you definitely have to have hot sauce and some balsamic vinegar going with it. And just baking it on, it's just a delicious balance. Because mm -hmm. the nutritional yeast kind of cools the, the heat, but it carries it really well. And then you're doing all these on parchment paper, correct? Yeah. And then you, you cut them in half. Do you put it like the flat side down typically? I'm not, I'm not fussy you, about that. You're not fussy. Right. Can't be. Can't be bothered. All right. I, can't, I learned from the master herself. I am fussy when I do my Brussels sprouts. All right. Let me tell you this. So this roasted cauliflower and broccoli bites, uh -huh. it caught my eye because I, as you know, I, I was on duty for dinner last night. I did roasted cauliflower and it turned out good, good but not amazing. Uh -huh. and I, I thought it was and, close. But I'm looking for amazing, amazing roasted cauliflower. So, and I mean, what makes this amazing? It, what makes it is that just the wee bit of seasoning. If you over season it, all you taste is seasoning because broccoli and cauliflower really are just like beautifully dressed water. And so just we have, we have some tamari, but we water it down because we don't want to have, you cannot Sorry. have too much salt. And then we have minced onion and granulated garlic which have a little more of a presence than just garlic powder and onion powder it's fine if you only have those but the minced onion are little chunks of onion and then when you cook them they it smells much different and then just add some seeds we have black sesame seeds which really have it have a wonderful like visual flavor to it almost and um and some poppy seeds and then and there you go the nutritional yeast at the end on top not sort of all throughout but just cha-cha on top now this i Cauliflower fritters. I, I'm obviously got cauliflower on my brain right now, but mm -hmm. cauliflower fritters, they look like they're deep fried. Don't Tell they? me they're not. No, they're not. Gosh. <laughs> We're up. No. Um, we, we had, I have a great friend who's from India and she is plant based and she just said, you know what? I've really had an amazing time making authentic Indian food plant strong. And my mom and I, this is again during COVID, we were like, we need a tutorial. She hosted us in her garage with the door open. It was probably 28 degrees out in Cleveland. And we sat there eating, you know, Urd dal and garam masala and all different kinds of naan bread. And uh, we learned so much from her. She took us to the Indian grocery store and we learned about finger peppers and different kinds of garam masala and on and on and on and on. And we will never even tap into the depth of Indian cooking, but these cauliflower fritters, mm -hmm. we had the appropriate seasonings, which is worth the trip to the, um, the Indian grocery store to get them for the, for the fritters. So this, barbecue 
pulled, what's it called? Barbecue. <laughs> Barbara yeah. pulled, oh, oh. Barbecue pulled portobello sliders and green goddess sauce. I just saw that and I'm like, I need that. And it looks like they're on different wedges of polenta. Rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, polenta rounds. Yeah. You get the... the with, you get a chub. Of with, is that butter lettuce? Um, it's spinach or whatever, whatever green yeah. you want. And then the, the barbecued pulled portobellos are so fun. You just have portobello mushrooms and you take the stems and you literally pull them apart so it looks like the strings of pulled pork kind of stuff mm-hmm. and put a little liquid smoke and cook so the, so the smoky flavor's in them. And then some barbecue sauce at the end just to coat them. All right. Cha-cha-cha. I'm going I'm, I'm to move on from appetizers to... Crackers, quick breads, and other fillers. Talk to me about beer bread. That, oh, oh, that's that's such, a mommy's favorite. Such fun. <laughs> so, there it is. She knocked it out of the woman, park. After a talk, a woman came up to me and told me about this. And so I couldn't believe it because I love anything fast. I don't like a lot of ingredients. And so this is just literally... You can use, if you don't want it to be, heavy. I mean, you could use oat flour, any flour, and uh, and beer, and a little baking powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so fun. I'll make it tonight. Well, tomorrow. Okay. So I also noticed, and I thought it was very <laughs> cute, was Jane and Ann's, Ann's short flax biscuits and, and, and Jane's tall flax biscuits here's a photo you can see right jane is the tall ones and the thick ones and ann's the thin smaller ones and and the thing about mine is that jane's are all so delicious but you use walnuts in them right so one's and plant so perfect said, and one's oh, plant jane, strong you don't have to have walnuts in them and so i made mine without walnuts and all and of our flax. recipe testers loved hers more than mine <laughs> So wow. I got my short flax biscuits in the book. I Lottie, and we oh. also have some soda bread. Lad, Lottie. Soda bread. I we do. Okay, it's Clava okay. Karen. Clava Karen soda bread. Did you see it? You cut Maybe. it open the top, you put a cross on top so the fairies can get out. I know it is. Clava Karen. If uh, I'm obsessed with Scotland and we went to um the Clava Karens, which are these unbelievable see it in the lip Anyway, um yeah. Are, this is so fun. This soda bread, it's delicious. It always works. It's foolproof. It's kind of like the beer bread. And um, anyway. And then these seed and millet crackers, I know you've made them. I've had them. And they I, I'm you have s- to, just unfortunately, you usually can't eat just one. I can't. They're like can't M&Ms. In the house. They're like, yeah. they're they're so they're like a wood chipper. Yeah. And they're, they're not plant perfect, are they? Oh yeah. oh yeah, no, no, they're Are plant they? strong. I mean, they're the, they're seeds. I think there's just some seeds. There's some well, flower seeds. Well, actually, you seeds. say heart disease friendly. Actually, yeah, there's there's some sunflower seeds but, in there. Okay. It's all seeds, but it's just so good. Chickpea flour, it's good. All right, we're we're we're, we're getting close a, to desserts. We're, we're getting close to desserts. I know we're getting close to desserts. Which no, I, we have to get to the main But first, we have to do B Y O B. What's that dinner. stand for? Build your own bowl. Which is something that. I think we all would agree this lifestyle, if you want it to be sustainable and easy, whether it's the open-faced sandwiches, whether it's the soups, whether it's oh, learning it's how breakfast. to build your own bowl. But look at this. Look at this and look at that studly arm right there. It's the <laughs> only male thing in this book, my husband's arm, because he cooks all these amazing foods, yep. better than all of us. Build your own bowl, handheld meals, and dinner feasts. Mm. Here. Um, talk to me. Talk to me about, I've got, talk to me first. What's that? The word pelvis means basin or bowl. Symbolically, this is more womanly and more powerful. What is more womanly and more powerful than the pelvis? What it creates, what it holds, family, life, pleasure, vitality. Mm. So build your own bowl bowl beautifully. Well... Well, you, there's you, you've got I don't know you've how many different bowls do you have in here? Like Probably nine. nine or ten. You can yeah. see how gorgeous they all are. Oh, that's the front. Uh, well, oh. <laughs> there you go. And it's also the front, yes. Ish. And what a gorgeous blue! Don't you love it? No, it's like it is the most beautiful sky blue ever. And we have a great uncle and aunt. We call this little blue. Little blue. Little oh, capital yeah. L. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So let me let let's move on to uh, well. I love your 
twice baked potatoes. Oh, mm-hmm. open face, twice baked potatoes. And the trick, mm-hmm. the trick what is to the trick? them is to, are, are, well, you, I like to use the Japanese sweet potatoes, along, uh, Japanese sweet potatoes, along with uh, any other like potato, Yukon Gold. but Yukon Gold are the best. So Yukon Gold and Japanese sweet potatoes combined with, with um, nutritional yeast. And they're awesome. And then I put in some kale. When our kids are home from college, sometimes they say, like, um, are we going to Aunt Nessie's house? Like, is Aunt going to make those open-faced potatoes? Like, I love how they call them open-faced because yeah. they don't know they're twice-baked. Yeah. Um, and then you've also got creamy stuffed sweet potatoes. Oh, they're good, too. Mm. Really good. Mm-hmm. There's something to Nutritional me about... Nutritional yeast makes a difference in there's them. There's something about twice-baked yeah. potatoes, and you stir it up, it is like, it's like, I don't know, it, it, it makes it a very pleasurable, easy eating experience. And you know, something that's so important is the power point of all potatoes is in the skin. And so many people don't eat the skin of sweet potatoes. And these uh, sweet potatoes in here, if you cook, recook them enough, the skin is to be absolutely fought over it's we so always delicious. say eat the hide yeah. <laughs> talk to me about crispy chicken nuggets because chicken this nuggets. is this for I, I look at these and i want to dip them in it, by the way ketchup. It, it's in, not in chicken ketchup. it's ketchup. check c-h-e-c-k-i-n checking you out because people are gonna be checking out what you're eating because these chicken nuggets are so delicious and, and what's the base it's it's chickpeas look that's what chickpeas it, and aquafaba and then some spices and oats uh, it's just really easy and fun i think you guys should make them with your kids <laughs> we okay you're gonna love I, them i like it you have a, several burgers in here you have a favorite well you know what they're uh, they're neck and neck mommy has a great burger in here black a burger and a flash bean burgers and a flash because i'm all for whatever is really quick but i really love the woman warrior burger because this is a tried and true burger that Actually, the, the sort of the origin story of our love with burgers started with Jeff Novick. He was the master and taught us all so much about burgers. Mm-hmm. And then we went on to change the recipe, you know, a bazillion different ways. And we are now have this woman warrior burger that we love. And it's made it all the engine to plant strong immersions. And it, it's a fave. Yeah, it's... Uh... So it's just easy winner. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a brilliant um, base for any any burgers. What about this chickpea masala? Um, maybe oh, you mentioned chole. that. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a, My I friend mean, Koyan, who was teaching us all about this, was like chickpea masala, or it's called chole, and um, she just has mastered this, and it's so beautifully done. And the key is these these um, green they're finger peppers, they're this you know, small, and the right ground masala, Brian's bowls. Oh, yum yum yum. All right, we're moving on now. All right, we're moving on. We're getting we're getting towards dessert here. So <laughs> dreamy, daring, and delicious desserts. Um, <sighs> I've got a list here, but if there's anything that you want to add to it, talk to me first about peanut butter gelato because oh my gosh, well, oh, I, I agree, <laughs> I agree, I agree, and I actually have this on my list, and I wanted to talk about it because it is in every one of my books or a version of it. And uh, it's this is a sweet potato, and you're calling this sweet potato and cashew ricotta lasagna. They've this is piled up like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Look at that. Is that just brilliant? And I want to have that for dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, my, it's my is husband that, is that Brian. A labor of love? It's such a labor of love, and Brian makes this. And it's just so interesting. He takes all the vegetables and the cashew ricotta, or if you want to do it with tofu or a, a cannellini bean to make it more heart disease friendly, he just puts it all together so the ricotta and veggies are all one uh, layer and then use multiple layers of that amongst all the sauce and noodles. And mm, the twice baked potatoes yeah, open yeah, face. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's, oh, let's. Rip, 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 you want pie. This is so, these are I, those. I know. Those are, that's the, the, the creamy stuffed sweet potatoes. They are just so good. Lollipop, I, lollipop. I, I, I know. Oh, so, so good. So talk to me about peanut butter gelato and I'm gonna find the, uh, the photo. Oh, I mean this gelato. Don't we tell had me that. that. We had that. Pl- we had that plant stock uh, last year. I was testing on these guys, and it is so. Just we have always made silken tofu based 
uh, puddings, frostings, mousses, and we just took it a step further and sort of pulled some of the water out with, with uh, extra like dish towels and stuff and then added some nut butter. So this is not a heart disease friendly uh, dessert, but add some nut butter, blur it all up. It freezes beautifully. It is so, it, it, it just, you can, you can just scoop it out with an ice cream scoop. It's so good. I mean, Brian, rip, not Brian, rip. Look at this. Can't you just hear, can't you just hear that like, no, it's, and you, you know, peanut butter or anything I'm like I'm and you add cocoa to it sucker. and you've got the chocolate and if you use almond butter it doesn't have that peanut butter flavor behind it but if you want the peanut butter chocolate go for it do you have a favorite brownie in here I oh mean, my god I, 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 I'm caught by the out of sight brownies but I mean okay let me yeah. just rip no rip, no. rip. No. you no. listening to me rip uh, okay, let, I just, rip. Uh, rip yes during COVID we were writing this book and my husband and I were watching a lot of TV at that COVID time. So at night, we would be sitting there watching TV, maybe eight or nine, and the door would rattle, and I'd, my begin, I would begin to salivate. It was sort of like, uh, I mean, I just was salivating because I knew that Jane was coming with another version of her brownies for us to try. And finally, the it took, to, well, how many tries, Jane? Twelve. 12 tries on one. Yeah, but we had thir- three brownies we were testing, and we did about 12 times each. So we had months of... And finally, my Essie said, this one is out of sight. Oh. <laughs> so that's what we called out of sight. Out of sight. What about this amaretto cherry chocolate hazelnut scone? Yeah. Th- this, <sighs> like we, we um, have scones in the Engine 2 cookbook which we love, then there's kind of a basic, like, hey, make these scones and add some chocolate chips or maybe add some raisins or whatever you want. But here, we just went, like, a whole new level with it and added amaretto, which gives it a flavor that is just, it's, like, reminiscent. And we added toasted walnuts and chocolate chips. The and, more and cherries. the better. Yeah, the more, the more items we have, the better. We've learned that. And my mom is awful. She's just, she... I bring them over and she picks all the pecans out of them or the wa- or the hazelnuts and then she just picks out. So you have this like carcass of a scone. It's still very good. But um, you're very funny. How about that? You know, I need a little stretch here. Can, can somebody talk about this couch and what the history of it and what makes it so special? Well, this is a very deep couch. <laughs> it's, it's In fact, two people easily sleep on it. I know. Look at this. I mean... And when... When my husband's fa- uh, family was um, house was getting divvied up, divvied up, <laughs> everybody sat in a room, and we had photos of every article, and so the fr- we went around by age, and so he was second in his family, and the, the Sally, I don't remember what she chose, he chose the brown couch. That was his first choice. Good move, Daddy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right, let's talk now the, well, I think we need to talk the lemon pie uh, squares. You won't believe, Rip, you, oh my God, we've got to make these, Jane. Mm-hmm. You, you will not believe what the basis of the lemon. lemon okay, well, lemon pie squares, like Rip, see the base, what you base, you know, there's a, there's a, the crust, if you will, of Is it lemon pie. Bowl? No, 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 no. <laughs> the, pie, the lemon pie squares. The base of this is a raisin and pecans, lightly toasted. So that's a, it's a really flavorful right. base. And wait, then the top wait, Jane, is... Stop, stop before you go beyond no. the crust. Because we also have to experiment with your cereal as the crust for this sometime. I think that Amy just showed how it can be done yeah. with... Um, with just your crust. Anyway. Right. So, so, the, so the crust here is delicious. And then the topping is, like I said earlier, about all these light, there's these silicon firm tofus that we make. You know, we've, we've got eight versions in here. We've got like lemon, lime, blackberry, blueberry, red, 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 red. Got a million of them. But this is the lemon as the topping. I know you guys can't see what we're talking about. So here, I'm just going to do it. Lemon this. mousse. This is the crust and the topping. And then the lemon, the filling. So when you've, you've had a lemon square, maybe, or you've seen them in your life. So I was just desperate to figure out how to make that sort of gelatinous. So what, do you know what we used? Uh, you Such use... Such a healthy yeah. ingredient. You use... Beginning of the day <laughs> ingredient. Oats. No, no, we, we oh. yes, well, we, yeah, that's, everyone's like, oh, did you use, like, agar, agar? And I'm like, no, aquafaba. no, no aquafaba. I, we have, in the breakfast section, we didn't talk about it, but we have a lemon oatmeal. 
and it was had some lemon in it, a little you know maple syrup in it, and some zest in it. So I just amped up our lemon oatmeal with like more zest, more juice, more syrup, and then I put it in the fridge. And it, you know, how when you refrigerate oatmeal, it becomes like just like and it sets, and it's sliceable. Mm. Like in Scotland, they take their oats and they put them in the drawer, and then in the morning they just take, they cut a section and they put it in their spore, and then they hike over the Loch Lomond. Um, anyway, they the the lemon oats I spread on top of the, the crust, refrigerate, and then you put the other topping on and you have these amazing lemon so squares and delicious. they are teenager approved. <laughs> you, we had a version of these the other day, gingered minty melon balls and orange juice. Yeah. And, I, and to, I just yeah. think this is, if you're looking for the, a very clean, hot summer day dessert, you can't go cannot no. go wrong and you it's can. so easy and it's so easy and the three things that i think are magic and where you can do it with watermelon with anything combination of every kind of fruit is add some fresh squeezed orange juice fresh mint and a little lime it no it's it, three that, things it, it amps it up to a, a you can't believe how well it so amps it's it up. just it's it, it's so delicious and you've also got <gasps> cookies in here oh such fun cookies Peppercocker. If you've heard of peppercocker, it's a Swedish cookie, and you put it in your hand. Is there? Well, here's a here's a peppercocker. But we the peppercocker. Um, uh, it's a, anyway, you put it in your hand, and when you tap it, if it divides into three parts, your wish comes true. <laughs> it took us so many tries to get that photo when we both had the three parts. <laughs> the and, cookie that I just absolutely love in here are your vanilla wafers. Oh yeah. Sounds mm-hmm. like something out of Squid Games. <laughs> Ooh, that may maybe. have gone over your head, but no, I, those of you that have seen I it, you have know seen Squid about. Games. That would be a yeah. scary one because you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, three pieces. Otherwise, <laughs> curtains for you. All right, so cookies. Um, what what is this? Because I want that. Yeah. Oh, that's called our Xander tart. Like, there's a Linzer tart, so these famous sort of European things. And our Xander tart, a friend of ours named Xander was driving through our house on his way um, during COVID to go west, and he tested it. And he was like, this is really good. But I didn't put the, f- the beautiful raspberries in the tofu to make it. It was kind of this gray tofu. And he's like, it, it doesn't look so good, but it tastes amazing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stick with it. But we, as soon as we put the fruit into the tofu mix, the game was next level. Wow. So, well, approved. thank you, everybody, <clears throat> for, for like letting us go through this labor of love that jane and ann have that put was together an exhaustive tour if you're still with us i'm so impressed with you well i'm impressed with rep and you're reading through this book and getting I, all listen, this I, yeah i am smitten with because it because you didn't have very much time because it just came, we just got it we just got it yeah um and let me ask you this and then i'm gonna ask you jane what are you most excited for right now going forward 2022, what are you most excited about? And if you need time to think, I can no, go to Jane. I am most excited that somehow our country can come together and agree on the things that are right for human beings. And one of them is plant-based nutrition. You're being an adorable bully again. Okay. Eat plant based. <laughs> how about everyone? You? How about you, Jane? I'm so excited about like it's hard to get beyond like like the first thing in my mind is always my three kids. So I'm excited about what they're doing this summer and what's happening with them. But if I can get beyond that and think about like what I'm excited about, I'm excited about our book coming out on mm-hmm. August twenty third. 2022 this feels like mm-hmm. i mean for me it's sort of special and i'm not trying to disclude my my dad who's the foundation of it all or my brother especially rip who's launched me into this space by including me on the, on the first cookbook but i'm so excited to have this i'm so excited to have done this with my mother because i mean it's like the coolest thing you could do i think because eating is not it's a non-optional it's you, if you can cook, you are so free. If you can make your own food, you are just, you are so empowered. And I love that this is a multi-generational gift that we've been given. Like his eight-year-old made dinner for all of us the other night. 
And and by the way, Rip and Jill were lying down on the bed upstairs while Hope <laughs> was cutting cucumbers, yeah. mango, red peppers, cucumbers, red peppers, all beautifully cut so we could all have her spring rolls. Spring rolls. So I'm I'm excited about having this not just be like right now it's multi-generational three generations i'm excited to see how this can become four generations and just get more infectious and larger and you know help so many people going forward you know i feel that the biggest gift which my husband originated the biggest gift that we have passed on to our four children and then also and then to our 10 grandchildren and they're all children's spouses is plant-based eating and I feel that it is the gift that we hope we can pass on to everybody out there mm -hmm. well, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving mm -hmm. right? cheers yeah um, I am excited about so many things but I am excited about seeing you guys in Cleveland uh, at the knob not only for the, <gasps> the Labor Day, but oh. after that for Plant Stock, Plant Stock. the 11th, and, We're and, out and, and and digging into some recipes from this book with you guys. So, Yay. Anne, thank you for everything. Mm. Jane, Rip. and you guys, thanks for being on the Plant Strong podcast oh, again. Thank you. And Rip, we are going to use some of your broths. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Peace. Engine two. Keep it plan strong. Thank you. And be a plant-based woman warrior. Live fierce. <laughs> stay bold. Eat delicious. Yeah. I'll be sure to put a link to order this book along with their zany, wonderful YouTube channel in the show notes at planstrongpodcast.com. Thanks so much, as always, for bringing my family along with you on your plant-based journey. And from the entire Esselstyn family to yours, always keep it plant strong. The Plant Strong podcast team includes Carrie Barrett, Lori Kordowich, Amy Mackey, Patrick Gavin, and Wade Clark. This season is dedicated to all of those courageous truth seekers who weren't afraid to look through the lens with clear vision and hold firm to a higher truth. Most notably, my parents, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. and Anne Cryle Esselstyn. Thanks for listening.